So many of you watched our last video. It was incredible. That video got far more comments than ever expected. Some of you even thought that the two of us were actually the same person. Thanks. Can you imagine what it's like having the internet question your very individuality? What are you all doing here with him? Can we be in this video? No. <sighs> well, we tried. In my last video, I analyzed all of the words spoken by Mr. Beast, and that video was by far the most successful video I've ever uploaded to the channel. We were not expecting that many comments. Many of you had some great suggestions on additional information you'd like to see tracked, as well as suggestions on how to improve the quality of the results. And when I asked you to suggest other YouTube channels to analyze, I received far more suggestions than I ever anticipated. Are we going to cover all of those channels today? Well, there were so many suggestions that I think I may need to make multiple follow-up videos. But of all the channels suggested, there was one channel that was by far the most suggested. <gasps> Which channel? Data Time. Our channel? Yes, my channel. In this video, we're going to go through some of the most popular questions that you asked about Mr. Beast data. Then we'll walk through the same analysis for my channel to see how we compare. <gasps> we're going to have a competition between Mr. Beast's channel and ours? Well, it's more of a comparison than a competition. We'll be looking at the most frequently used words and phrases, complexity of lexicon, speed of speaking, and we'll even incorporate an AI to help with our analysis. But enough talk, more data! It's data time! I'm data. In my last video, we looked at all the words spoken on the Mr. Beast channel and did some analysis on his speaking rate, as well as the general sentiment of the words spoken. Then we asked you what else you wanted to see. One of the most common requests was to analyze Mr. Beast's most common and least common words. Oh, I bet he says money or PewDiePie a lot. The reason I didn't include this in the video is because the most common words spoken are not really that interesting. I think I'd like to know. Fine. Here are the most common words spoken on the Mr. Beast channel. The most common words spoken on the Mr. Beast channel is you, followed by I, the, to, and a. Eh, that's not that interesting. Exactly. The English language is built so that we use a lot of the same small words repeatedly in order to construct sentences. Yeah. But I want to know what meaningful words he says the most. Well, one thing we could do is link in our English dictionary of 370,000 words and see what are the most common words he says that are not in the dictionary. How would that help? This means we'll exclude all of the typical words spoken by people and only leave more specific words like names and proper nouns. The most common words spoken here are YouTube, followed by Mr. Beast and PewDiePie. I knew it. After that, it's Nolan. Nolan? Really? Yeah, I was surprised by that too. I would have thought one of Jimmy's other friends would have been higher. So I examined my dictionary and found some interesting insights. It turns out my dictionary does contain proper nouns like Chris, Carl, Chandler, and even Tariq. But it does not contain the name Nolan. Your dictionary contains Tariq, but not Nolan? Yeah. Sorry, Nolan. I can fix this. Let's instead look for specific names in the data set and see which names are most frequently spoken. If I hard code the names of people I want to search for, I can get a report of just those names. The most common name spoken is Jimmy's name, followed by Chris, then Chandler, then Carl, then PewDiePie, then Tariq, and finally, at the bottom, is Nolan. So Nolan's name is actually the least spoken. That's right. Sorry, Nolan. If we continue with our common words outside of the English dictionary, we find you'll, which is not a contraction my dictionary contains. I don't know why. Followed by this. Ba, 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 ba. That's not a word. Correct. It's a word not in the English dictionary, but it is a word spoken a lot by Mr. Beast. What is it? It comes from one video. B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B B We'll skip that one. Next is YouTubers, followed by y'all, which is another contraction that isn't in my dictionary for whatever reason, followed by underscore, underscore. Underscore, underscore? So this is an artifact of the auto-generated transcriptions YouTube provides. The system doesn't transcribe profanity. Ha <laughs> he saw that for he's like, this isn't a bot. Instead, it gives this notation in the transcripts. You mean they censor out all the curse words? That's right. 
The only profane words I found in the transcripts were the ones that were manually uploaded by the user. All right, well, it just so happens my videos are fucking expensive as hell. This is an important caveat since all of these profane words are not incorporated into my sentiment analysis, even though these words are pretty negative. If I manually track some of the most common curse words, I can find 276 instances of profanity across Jimmy's channel. That's about one curse word for every 3,600 words spoken. Okay, so if it's so difficult finding the most common words spoken, what about the least common words? Well, that's not that interesting either since there are so many of them. I found Mr. B says about 15,000 unique words that are in the dictionary. Of those, about 4,900 are only ever spoken once. So so roughly one in three of the unique words spoken are spoken once and only once. The longest words in this list are environmentalists, counterproductive, and multimillionaires, which are the same as the longest words spoken by Mr. Beast ever. Hmm. These don't sound very interesting either. Right. That's why I didn't add them in my original video. So there's no way to find interesting speech patterns on Mr. Beast's channel? Well, if instead of looking for common words, we look for common phrases, we might be able to find more interesting insights. Can we find interesting phrases that Jimmy repeats? Yes, but it's a bit more tricky than you might think. While looking at commonly repeated phrases on the Mr. Beast channel, I quickly realized I was going to need to exclude a lot of unnecessary repetition. Mike, 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 Mike. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Ball Logan, Ball Logan, Ball Logan, Ball Logan, Ball Logan, Ball. Jimmy repeats himself a lot. But if we exclude these repetitious words, we can find some common three word phrases. The most common three word phrases are I don't know, a lot of, oh my god, I'm going to, going to be. If we look at four word phrases, we find, thank you so much, a lot of people, I don't know what, as you can see, what do you think, I don't know if. Eh, those don't really sound like catchphrases. Let's increase the word count. Some popular six word phrases are, let me know what you think, oh my god, oh my god, and yes, that phrase gets repeated a lot. We are high up there. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my, oh, my oh, my oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. It's so good, it's worth saying twice. And the longest phrases said repeatedly on the Mr. Beast channel are the lyrics to his outro songs. Mr. Beast, six thousand, yeah, you know his name. He changed it once or twice, but I think it's here to stay. The other big comment I received about my Mr. Beast video has to do with the sentiment analysis I used. I used a very simplistic NLTK process, which just looks for keywords in the text. And to be honest, I don't even know if I was using it correctly. Everyone suggested that in 2024, I should be using a large language model. You mean AI? That's right. The AI is able to understand more context than a simple word lookup algorithm can. What kind of context? For example, if I say, you don't know what you're talking about, the NLTK process doesn't see any trigger words and returns a negativity score of zero and a positivity score of zero. However, if I run this text through OpenAI, it says the text has a negativity score of 0.9 and a positivity score of 0.1. One thing that I found frustrating is that the AI doesn't always give me the same answer for the same text. If I ask it to process a piece of text multiple times, I will sometimes get slightly different answers for the same piece of text. Unfortunately, I think this is actually by design, since LLMs are designed to reply to you like a person would, which means they vary what they say. I set up an API account with OpenAI so I could build a Python script that feeds it all of the words spoken by Mr. Beast in order to find the sentiment score. Was it better? Let's find out. Using the data we get from the AI, we can plot Jimmy's overall positive sentiment year over year. We see that in 2016, his positivity score had dropped and his negativity score had grown. However, since then, his overall positivity has grown and his negativity has dropped. I think this makes intuitive sense since his older videos used to be more negative back when he criticized other YouTubers for their worst intros. He has since removed these videos from his channel and become a much more positive brand. Here is what the AI thinks is Mr. Beast's most negative video that he hasn't removed. I hate Google Plus. What 
the heck, YouTube? Quit forcing it on me. I'm never gonna use Google Plus. No one ever uses Google Plus. Quit forcing it on us like it's a freaking religion or something. We don't want Google Plus. No one will ever love Google Plus. I hate Google Plus. Google Plus sucks. Screw Google Plus. Remember, shorter videos tend to score higher for positivity and negativity because there aren't as many words in the video to even out the score. What's his most positive video? This one. I grabbed 100 people from age one all the way up to age 100 to try Feastable. Do you mind telling me what you think of this chocolate? This is the best ever had. Ooh, that's good. I love this. It's actually my favorite. As you can see, all ages between one and 100 love it. He really seems to like it. Something else I like to try is to estimate the sophistication of his words. Sophistication? There are formulas like the Fletch Kincaid grade level that are meant to do this. They determine if a person is speaking at a middle school level, high school level, or college level. The problem is most of these reading level scores depend on knowing the length of sentences. Why is that a problem? The transcripts that YouTube auto generates have no punctuation. So each video is really just one really long run on sentence. So there's no way to track this. Well, we can still track other aspects of word complexity like how many syllables are used for each word, as well as how easy or common each word is. Here, we can see a histogram of the frequency of words used that are found in the dictionary, based on how many syllables they have. Most words spoken by Mr. Beast are small, single-syllable words. Two-syllable words are spoken even less frequently, and even bigger words are even less frequent. We can also see what percentage of words spoken are not in the 30,000 word list of easy common words. About 56% of the time, Jimmy is using difficult words, words that are not found in this list of easy words. Is that a lot? I don't know. It depends on what you compare it against. You said you'd compare our channel to Mr. Beast's. Right. Let's now take a look at how my channel compares to Mr. Beast's. My channel is significantly smaller than the Mr. Beast channel. I only have 74 videos for a total watch time of about five and a half hours or about 58,000 words spoken with a unique word count of about 4,700. My longest words are 17 letters long. They are also environmentalists and counterproductive. Just like Mr. Beast. Yes, because in my last video, I said those words when I was describing Mr. Beast's channel. So they got transcribed onto my channel. The other longest word I say is non-denominational on my Bible code video. I'm trying to keep it non-denominational to minimize offensiveness. My most common words are just as boring as Jimmy's. My most common words that are not in the dictionary are loss, loss, as in Los Angeles. Also, YouTube and Earthers as in flat earthers and globe earthers. My least frequently used words that are found in the dictionary are also words I've only spoken once. The number of words I've only ever said once totals about 1,900. The longest of these are non-denominational and counterintuitive. What about environmentalists and counterproductive? They were spoken multiple times in my last video by me as well as by Mr. Beast in the clips I played. Now, let's take a look at my word complexity. Here is a histogram of the syllables used in my videos. Just like with Mr. Beast, I use a lot of small words and only a few large words. If we plot them logarithmically, we can see the drop off better. If we compare them to Mr. Beast's, we can see that I tend to use slightly more big words than he does. If we look at the percentage of words that I use that are part of the 30,000 easy word list, we see that about about 54% of my words are difficult words. That's actually slightly less than Mr. Beast's 56%. Jimmy uses more big, difficult words than you? Evidently. For profanity, I have 0% since my channel doesn't have any profanity on it. You're darn tootin'. Now, let's look at speaking speed. Looking at my words per minute year over year, we can see that my videos are fairly consistent at around 165 words per minute, with a slight increase this year to 185. Mr. Beast's speed is a bit higher with a rate of about 175 to 200. I also ran my transcripts through the AI to calculate sentiment and was able to plot my sentiment year over year. My positivity rate seems to be relatively stable since I started the channel. My negativity rate is a little lower than my positivity rate. That's about what I would expect. Here is one of my most positive videos. Hurricane Hillary is coming to Los Angeles tomorrow, but today the weather is great and the beaches are open. The weather was great throughout the afternoon. There's no rain, not much wind, which makes for great volleyball weather. Saturday afternoon, it's still sunny in Venice Beach. Once again, shorter videos tend to score higher for positivity and negativity. Here is my most negative video. This rocket, supposedly, on the globe Earth. It looks like there's a fire over that hill. That's not a rocket, that's just a flare. 
player. That's what the Globe Earthers want you to believe. Oh, it's yeah. gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Well, that's what they want you to believe, all those Globe Earthers. Got that's it. all Got lie. It. Does the AI understand your sarcasm? I don't think so, but even still, the negative things I'm saying seem to be enough for the AI to score it as highly negative. And finally, excluding the clips I used from other videos, my most commonly used phrase is clear. But enough talk, more data! It's data time! But enough talk, more data! It's data time! It's data time! So, who won? One? I don't think this was a competition as much as it was a comparison. Overall, I think my speaking speed is a bit slower than Jimmy's, and my videos have been overall more positive and less negative than Mr. Beast's videos. We should compare these results to more YouTube channels. Yes. We should find another channel to examine, one that all of you recommended. Maybe this time, we should look at another educational YouTube channel.